Hello, hello. Uh, I'm Ivan. I'm uh, from uh, eastern part of uh, Slovakia, and I'm working with a uh, technology called Nix. Uh, but um, I want to talk about a little bit of history as well. Like many years ago, I had a company, and we were using mostly uh, like uh, exclusively uh, open source software. And at that time, I introduced uh, QGIS to some of my friends and colleagues. And some of them are uh, now running this uh, conference. So I'm very proud that uh, they made it uh, so far. Uh, and um, uh, nowadays, uh, I'm married. I have uh, four kids. And uh, we like to do some funny outdoor stuff uh, with them. Um, and. Uh, in, uh, in terms of Nix, um, uh, I started Nix uh, Geospatial team, uh, where we look after um, all geospatial software. We manage that, um, improve uh, packaging, and also I started project called Geospatial Nix uh, today. I'm going to talk about it a little bit uh, later. So this talk is going to be about some quite really innovative ways of uh, running uh, software on a computer. I can't describe it uh, in uh, other words, because this technology doesn't look uh, too much as uh, anything uh, people are used to. So um, in geospatial world, uh, uh, we have uh, lots of bits and uh, pieces, and uh, we put them together and, uh, and then use for our work. But uh, in reality, it's like uh, so many uh, interconnected uh, pieces of software. We have like core libraries like GDAL and Proj, and they have like some add-ons. We have a Python uh, modules. We have a databases, web server, CLI tools. Uh, we have, uh, and, and for example, to build the QGIS, uh, we use a lot, lot of uh, non-geospatial software by nature like Qt and uh, SIP. And on top of that, uh, we built our desktop software like uh, QGIS, for example, and many, uh, many others. But like a uh, uh, common pattern is that like all of them uh, use all those uh, uh, bits of pieces. Um, and uh, we have uh, users of uh, software. And those users, they usually don't care too much like how uh, all this stuff we built, uh, they just basically want to run that software on any machine. It looks like as a simple thing, which should be uh, already solved uh, many years, but it's not that true. For example, uh, if I go to the second point, uh, they want to run any software without uh, breaking another one. Uh, and you see where I'm uh, going with that. It's not always uh, guaranteed uh, that you can throw any kind of software on, on your machine and like uh, nothing else is going to uh, be uh, running as it was. Uh, they, they want to have a freedom uh, if they want to update their software or they want to keep it forever, like 20 years uh, to run some uh, QGIS version because something uh, worked and they, they don't want to uh, change it for some reason. Um, they want to uh, reproduce their or repeat their installation on any other machine uh, as well uh, at uh, any time. For example, I want to have the same machine as I had like five years ago for some reason because I suddenly need to support something uh, which I did five years ago. Um, advanced users, they might say that they want to have like full uh, control about like everything which is coming to their computer, like whole dependency graph, not only about the like, QGIS version, but they want to have uh, control about like the GDAL version, the Qt version, or like anything um, somewhere in between or under that. Um, they want to customize all those uh, dependencies, like for example, there's improvement in uh, GDAL and they want to have that improvement or there's like bug fix in GDAL and they want to have it in their QGIS. Um, and developers, um, they want to just grab a source code and they want to start hacking. And another thing, if they do something, they want to have like very efficient uh, feedback loop for the users. So they change something and they want to have a 
uh, feedback whether it works or doesn't. The problem is this, like all those uh, points, they represent uh, all those bits and pieces which are needed actually to run uh, QGIS. And all those lines, they represent uh, some kind of relationships between all dots, all dots and pieces. So uh, it's quite apparent that it's uh, not a trivial task to put this together and make sure that it works and it's not uh, break, broken somewhere. So um, next is one of the technologies which, uh, which uh, can help you uh, with that. Uh, next uh, was uh, designed by uh, a Dutch student Elko Dostra as part of his uh, PhD thesis in 2006. Uh, it's uh, quite a uh, unique design. He didn't follow or try to fix what uh, already existed. Uh, he chose his uh, own way of uh, doing things. That's why I'm saying uh, it doesn't look like as anything else. It's advantage and disadvantage sometimes uh, as well. Um, so features of Nix. There's a reproducibility, but like scientific reproducibility built in in uh, Nix, like uh, if you build something multiple times, you always have the same result. So one piece of software needs to be built only once uh, and then like it can be uh, reused by anybody else on any machine. Uh, you can uh, have the, the same result between multiple machines or over the time. Uh, you have full control over a whole dependency graph. So like I have uh, uh, like my soft, my Nix software comes with everything uh, about the basic uh, C library level and I can uh, uh, I have a control and I can change it I can customize it uh, there's no software conflict that's a quite important point I can have like 100 uh, versions of QGIS with 100 versions of GDALs on my computer and uh, it's not an issue at all uh, it runs on all Linux uh, computers on Macs and uh, WSL as well currently um, Nix allows you to construct uh, per project isolated environments for all types of software, which is very often what we do for geospatial projects. We have like all kinds of software. We have a database, we have a uh, desktop app, we have a Python, we have some kind of tools. And Nix allows you to uh, build isolated reproducible environment for per project. So it's like Python virtual env, but like for all, all softwares. Uh, uh, software is locked to particular version. It's not changing uh, until you want. Uh, there's a great customization support. If I want to have uh, some patch or some tiny change just because of, uh, just because of some project, uh, you can do it. It's not going to break other your projects or other your software. And then there's uh, dozens of other unique features which are not found anywhere else. So what's next? Like we used to say, uh, it's a package manager. You can use it as a package manager, but like it's, it's much more than package manager. It's computation engine on uh, file systems. It doesn't make a sense to anybody. That's okay. <laughs> you get used to it once, once you start uh, using Nix. Nix is a language as well. It's pure, functional, lazy, declarative, reproducible programming language. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's functional language. Uh, there's uh, Nix packages as well. Nix packages, by the way, the largest repository of software on the planet. It's much bigger than like uh, Debian, Ubuntu, Arch repository. Um, there's a Nix module system, which allows you to declaratively configure your system. So it means that uh, you say what you want, not how to get there. I, I just say like, I want to have QGIS. I want to have PostGIS. On my computer, something like that. Not the way how to get there. And then there's a NixOS, uh, very unique operating system uh, built uh, on top of it. So that's a theory. Uh, and now uh, some real uh, life uh, examples. So um, typically on uh, Nix OS or Nix user uh, machine, we don't install uh, too much of uh, software. I usually have my browser editor and some uh, very basic stuff installed and everything I, I run on demand. So with uh, Nix, you don't need to have QGIS installed. You can, you can say, where is it? You can say Nix run from my GitHub repository run QGIS and that's it. 
uh, next will uh, automatically do what's uh, needed and you see like I have like uh, uh, QGIS running in a command line on my computer without uh, installing anything, uh, without like uh, populating my system uh, too much. Um, I can as well run next, uh, I can run uh, QGIS in different versions. So I, I run the same command, but like I want to run QGIS in this version of my repository. So now uh, it was uh, version 38.2 before, uh, and yeah, you see, and now I have little bit older version uh, running on my computer. Uh, and if I want to be like traditional, I can even like install it to some of my uh, home personal profiles. So I do Nix profile install and I have this QGIS version uh, installed. Uh, so um, there's a very handy, nice feature uh, to uh, run isolated environments uh, for your software. Um, if I run command Nix shell, uh, and say what kind of software I want to run inside of that shell. I have a grass uh, in that shell, and I have a QGIS in my shell environment without like, again, like populating uh, my uh, computer with something. And if I run, if I say exit, uh, everything is gone. Um, for advanced uh, users, Nix has a very nice uh, customization support, uh, very powerful. So in this example, I just say nix run, run something for me. I'm not saying like install, build or whatever. I'm just like saying nix, please run something. So grab my geospatial nix repository, grab a pack, a Linux packages as P and uh, uh, grab a package called QGIS and do and use override function where I replace GDEL with uh, GDEL master version. As, and as a result of running Nix run something, I have a nice uh, QGIS running uh, GDL development version 3.10 without like caring too much what, they, what needs to be built or what's dependency of what Nix will uh, deal with that. Um, there's even like better, more detailed or more granular uh, function to do the same. I, I, I'll did the same things. And then I uh, use function override headers where I'm saying like use as a CMake flags of my build process, use old, old uh, CMake flags, original one, and add this one, which means like build uh, QGIS without 3D, just for example. And next will just run uh, you uh, QGIS without 3D build. Or for example, you can uh, add a patch with some bug fix or some feature to your build by just using yeah, override functions and function called fetch page uh, uh, in very similar way. Nix is even better, sometimes the people are saying it's better Docker image builder than uh, Docker itself. Um, uh, there's a function called build image, uh, which uh, takes the name of the image and then it takes, for example, it, it can take uh, different uh, other uh, uh, arguments as well, but like if I say I want to run in my image, I want to run grass, this kind of, this, this command called uh, yeah, grass version, that's everything needed for this function to build a fully functional Docker image, which will be able to run grass. So if I use this piece of code, uh, it will generate me a tarball with a Docker image, which I can load, and then if I run it, I have a grass uh, inside. Um, no uh, Docker file with like uh, not needed uh, commands. So for developers, uh, Nix can provide uh, another very interesting uh, feature. So I created this PR in a, a GitHub repo containing those four files. Normally it's free files, but uh, QGIS in, uh, is a little bit more complicated, at least in our Nix packaging. Maybe we drop this, but like, uh, so in this PR you will find those four files. And if, if you accept them, as a QGIS project, what you could do is you could, as a developer, uh, clone the source code and run command nix develop, which will automatically drop you in the shell environment with all uh, QGIS built uh, dependencies and everything else needed to build uh, QGIS. 
it will give you these nice uh, instructions. And like running Nix develop, uh, you can just copy paste them and start building uh, QGIS uh, uh, without caring too much like uh, from where I'm going to grab X, Y, Z. Uh, another uh, even cooler feature is uh, possibility to run uh, run QGIS directly from a GitHub source code. So I would be able if if you uh, adopt this PR. Uh, you would be able to say nix run uh, QGIS GitHub repository QGIS, and it will run the latest master version of uh, QGIS on your computer. Or you could run something uh, from specific re uh, revision. You get QGIS from specific revision or from branch. Uh, this is extremely useful for uh, feedback. Um, you do some changes as a developer, and you just like ask your users to run uh, this command, and they, they can try uh, what you did without like breaking their other uh, software, and they can uh, have uh, like they can try many versions of, of your PR uh, whenever uh, it's it's needed. Um, you can do very similar thing if you want to install software. Instead of Nix run, you can like install it, and you can install it as well, like as the latest version, Git revision, uh, uh, PR branch, whatever. So, what's not uh, uh, working uh, currently? I said at the beginning, uh, uh, Nix runs on a Mac, but uh, QGIS doesn't, and it's uh, primary because, like everybody who like I'm not a uh, Mac uh, user, developer, anything, and I supported <laughs> uh, two different people to to make uh, QGIS running on a Mac, and they failed not because of technical reasons, but like for some other other personal reasons. So like, if somebody wants to help us, uh, it's not that uh, difficult to get it uh, running finally. I'll really appreciate that. Uh, currently, uh, for some reason, some uh, unit tests coming f uh, with QGIS are not working. Um, yeah. And uh, in, in general, uh, GPU drivers are not available out of box uh, for Nix software if you are running uh, not Nix OS uh, system. But it's quite easy. Uh, if you know what to do, it's quite easy to get them running. You just need to point uh, your environment to, to, to basically to drivers uh, coming uh, from from Nix, but it's not going to run out of box. Um, so, ah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, there's even easier way how to get your QGIS uh, running with Nix. Uh, it's a project which I started uh, called uh, Geospatial Nix uh, today. I'll try to somehow open it in in another tab. How can I do that? Oops. Okay, I tried but didn't work. So, uh, so uh, th it's. Uh, Web UI, uh, where uh, you can uh, you can create reproducible isolated environments for your geospatial projects, which will contain uh, software or data and services specifically for your for your uh, project. As as it's needed, you can have as many uh, environments uh, um, as you want uh, there. So there's a, a tab called Apps where you can enable uh, or get some applications to your project. So if I enable QGIS, uh, I can select the version. I can, I can add some uh, Python uh, libraries, which are not typically packaged with, uh, with QGIS. There's uh, like 8,000 uh, Python libraries, which you can get uh, for your QGIS. You can select uh, Python plugins. Advantage of that is that you, you always have reproducible set of plugins. It's not uh, it's not uh, changing over the time. It's exactly the the version of plugin which you which you selected, and then uh, if you want to have some general purpose packages, you can like uh, choose other packages like Library Office if you don't have it or whatever from the the list of fifty thousand uh, packages for your project. These are not geospatial packages like software provided by geos uh, by Nix packages. Then you can have a, you can add some languages, 
So currently we have a Python only, but we are working on R. So the, the same thing, you can create Python interpreter with, with uh, Python libraries or modules which you want for your project. You can, you can add services. Currently we have like these. Uh, so for example, if I, if I add a Jupyter notebook, I can add Python libraries which I want. I can do some configuration and it will create a kernel a geospatial kernel uh, with this uh, configuration, or I can have reproducible data set attached uh, to my project uh, uh, guaranteed by, by hash. And here uh, I can, for example, uh, enable OpenGL so I, my uh, GPU drivers will work. So if I click on create, uh, uh, it will give you a complete set of instructions how you can start with Nix, how you can get this uh, project running on your regular non-Nix, non-Nix OS, Linux machine. So this is uh, how to install Nix, first command. And then there's a command to initiate the project. So create the directory, uh, do git in it, and do another geospatial Nix in it, which gives you two extra uh, files, uh, flake.nix uh, and geonix.nix. And this is a reproducible configuration of my declarative and reproducible configuration of my environment. So, uh, yeah. Dan, you are over 20 minutes. Ah, yeah, okay. And so, uh, if, if you run uh, uh, Geonix CLI shell, it will give you shell environment. If you run app command, it gives you, it runs services. If you run container shell, it will give you container image with your environment. And if you push it to Git, you have, uh, everybody else can, uh, do the the same thing. And the last thing, I just want to point you to documentation. Uh, if I find a way how to go back <laughs> with this browser, I don't know uh, how to do that. Uh, so um, maybe I just reiterate that uh, uh, we are a uh, Nix ge geospatial team. Uh, you can find us on uh, uh, nixos.org uh, in the community section. Uh, we have uh, we have. Uh, matrix channel and there's a nix.dev uh, documentation where you can find some uh, useful instructions how to run nix and thank you very much for for your attention thank you ivan are there any questions Nix is super cool, and thank you for a very, very uh, inspiring presentation. Um, I tried to get into Nix. Uh, the Nix language seemed a little complicated to write uh, things from scratch. It's easy to customize things, so for um, with, with, with large language models coming into play, uh, they support Python really well. What is the support of, of, of large language models or some other tools that would help someone starting in Nix or someone uh, who wants to develop their own thing? Um, what, what is the state of, of support uh, uh, in, in, in this area? Yeah, like I'm, uh, yeah, like may, maybe I'm not the biggest expert on, on that. Uh, I can uh, talk uh, uh, about geospatial stuff mostly, but yeah, like people are using, uh, uh, there are like many people using uh, uh, Next for machine uh, learning. Um, and uh, so I guess, uh, I um, guess it works like the advantage of, of using Nix is that you, you have really your, uh, your infrastructure uh, under control, basically. Like, I, yeah, I can't provide more, more details. Yes, one more question. Um, thank you for your presentation. And um, I really like that you already have the possibility to also install QGIS plugins. And, um, but I was thinking about the, the, the up to 40% of the QGIS users use Windows. Is it possible to, to use Nix there as well? Yeah, no, uh, they can't. Uh, like uh, currently uh, Nix runs uh, only on uh, Linux and Mac. Like um, there's a lot of people coming from scientific uh, background and using uh, Nix for because of reproducibility and their 
argument why it uh, doesn't like th there's a there's effort to get uh, Nix running on uh, Windows. People are working on that, but like uh, what they heard many times is that like if you want to have reproducibility, which is one of the very important features of Nix, how uh, you want to do that on like proprietary platform where you mm. can have things under control because like on Linux or on a Mac, uh, Nix will provide you with like uh, all software runs. All software included with your uh, uh, with your QGIS is really everything uh, ab about the kernel uh, level, and this is uh, m maybe hard to achieve on proprietary platforms. So not not too many people are really interested in that. Thank you. All right, uh, no more questions. Anyone? We have time for a short question. Is that a yes, uh, Ismail? <laughs> yeah, short one. Okay. Right. I'm, I'm curious when you like, uh, build, uh, like for example, cages with Nix, uh, is the like the speed of the building is still the same or slower? Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't. Like when you build cages with Nix, and uh, will it be slower or uh, in the same duration if you do it? Uh, Without Nix? Yeah. I was, okay. so so when you uh, you said that uh, we can uh, like say launch cases with specific commit or specific pull request, and when you do that, uh, you, do you need to like the uh, test Nix like build the build the cookies from the source? Yeah. And yeah. then it will take the same time or is or longer compared to like without using Nix. Yeah, like uh, if, if you run something from uh, source code, uh, it needs to, like Nix will evaluate your command first and it will check your computer if you ever built exactly the same version. Or there's a, a concept of binary caches where people can upload their uh, already built uh, software. And if you have some binary cache enabled containing this exact uh, build of QGIS with all exact uh, ver all ex exactly the same uh, dependencies, it will just reuse it because it can, uh, because it's reproducible. But like if nothing contains, uh, nothing contains the, the same build, it will know that it needs to be built on your computer and then uh, it will run. But like you, you need to do it only once. And if you have like many people in your company, it's uh, very easy to have binary cache so it, you can automatically upload everything in the binary cache so only one person needs to build it, or you can, for example, like run this on your CI and populate uh, your binary case so people don't need to do it uh, at all by themselves, so. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you very much. And also a big thank you on behalf of the organizers. Uh, thank you very thank much. Thank you for presenting.